Dolmens. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and very good evening to all the new and old Nurture users uh, joining different from different parts of the world. Thank you for being here with us today. I am Bence Bernat from Hungary, a professional chess player as well as a foundation coach at Nurture. I will be moderating today's session. We welcome Grandmaster Christian Sabo on the platform with his camp on King's Indian Defense with Black. So to the new subscribers, a little bit, I want to tell a little bit about his life and chess journey. So Christian Sabo is a Hungarian Grandmaster with a peak rating of 25.64. He has won multiple uh, Hungarian national championships as a European championships, World Youth Championship, and also represented his country as the part of the Elbows team for many years. He is a celebrated coach and has been behind the successes of Rehard Rapport, who was a grandmaster at 13, also Aryan Chopra, grandmaster, who is a grandmaster at 14, and many international masters. He has also worked extensively with Peter Leko and Judith Polgar uh, and spent six years with each of them. Uh, <clears throat> so now I would like to explain some do's and don'ts. So please use chat box for answering and use Q&A box to ask questions. Also, please avoid spamming the chat and avoid repeating the same questions. Yes, and if you are uh, unable to log in, what should you do? So please bear with us, you will be able to enjoy the content very soon. Add the link. Also, exciting uh, stuff coming in April. So uh, watch this space and your inbox, and also check the, the link for more. So thank you. Now I will welcome Grandmaster <clears throat> Christian Sabo. So hello, how are you, coach? <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Hello, I went uh, Welcome, everybody. I'm uh, very happy to be here for the NERD uh, Academy again. Uh, our today's topic will be the King's Indian. Uh, I will talk about how can uh, how can you attack with black in the King's Indian because uh, exactly with black we can also play for win many times. So not uh, basically uh, basically in, in no, generally black is fighting for the equalizing after the opening. But there are some sharp openings, like for example, the King's Indian, when we have uh, when we have uh, good chances to attack also. So even play for win is also a possibility. Uh, let me share the screen and we can uh, start immediately with the with the examples. So okay, here is my uh, chessboard. I think now it is, yeah, it's good. Okay. And uh, yeah, I will show you some interesting game. Uh, some of them will be even mine because uh, this was one of my uh, my main repertoire. Also, uh, I will show from the from the most more simple games from the for, from that to the more complicated one. Uh, Okay, so let's go ahead. D4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. So this is the king's Indian, e4, d6. Okay, white can gain the center. And at the beginning, it seems to be a bit dangerous, but uh, we don't need to worry about that because soon black will play for e5 and he will be also good in the center. So we no need to worry about this at all. Knight f3, castle. Bishop e2, e5. And now we just focus uh, on the classical main line because, okay, there is d takes e5 variation here, bishop e3 also. But let's focus on the castle, knight c6, d5, 
and knight e7. This will be our standing position. And the real classical line is the knight e1, but we will have uh, today some nice games for uh, b4, also the bayonet variation. So knight e1. Uh, White's idea is very clear. Uh, he would like to move with his knight from uh, from f3 because uh, with f3 he frees the f3 square for his knight. So then, he, in his, his pawn structure, he can uh, protect his center, and uh, probably his knight will go towards d3 and help for the c5. Because why? Black's idea is playing with this knight somewhere, maybe e8 or h5, and then come with f5 and attack on the king's side, create an attack against the against the white king, while white's idea is coming on the queen's side as quick as possible. So one of the ideas is knight d3 and playing for c5, and another idea is uh, keeping his knight to e1 and. Uh, and the knight, knight will have a nice uh, development, he, uh, sorry, defense here. It's no problem for the development because uh, the rook can also come after f3 uh, around the knight. So it, it's not no problem of the development and also protect the g2 and f3 squares in the critical moments. So the knight on e1 is, is uh, completely okay. Okay, let's see how can Black do. Knight e8. Black uh, continue his uh, his plan also. Bishop e3. Okay, this is the another strategy. Knight g knight d3 is the the another plan to play for that. Both of them are uh, focus on the queen side's play. F5, F3, and F4. Black's idea is closing the position, closing the center and focus on the king's side attack as much as possible. Bishop f2 and h5. Just go with the pawns. g5 is uh, also a possibility with the same idea. Just we say h5 right now is a little, little bit more precise because uh, after g5, there is an extra variation with uh, g4. Also no problem, uh, typical structures. But uh, with h5, we even, even avoid that because then g4, we can play h takes g4, and that exchange is not really good for uh, white. So c5, both sides are following their uh, own idea. g5, a4, knight g6. We don't really want to play with the e8 knight to go back because this knight is very nice, uh, similar like his uh, colleague on e8. Yes, e8, e1, because this is protecting the d6, c7 squares as well. And the uh, knight, uh, knight is really, really nice here. So instead of that, we will have uh, different attacking moves. a5, he also continued the uh, plan. Bishop h6. Bishop h6 is one of the main plan here. The another is rook f7, bishop f8, and rook g7 to transfer the rook to g7. And uh, we will see in the game also the rook, rook on the seventh rank is very powerful because it helps for the attack on the g file and also makes some protection on c7. Why the c7 square is important? Why I mentioned this many times? Uh, White's main plan is playing for knight b5 and sometimes even queen c2 or rook c1. And after c takes d6, uh, the knight can go to c7. And every exchanging is just helping for uh, white because strategically white is better. But black has a strong attack on the king's side, so black should focus on the attack. But for the attack, uh, he doesn't, Black doesn't really want to exchange. He would like to keep his pieces. Bishop h6, knight b5. Also, both sides are following their plans. And after knight b5, uh, he takes pressure on a7. So now he is threatening with c takes d6, c takes d6, knight takes a7. 
Also, sometimes we sacrifice that pawn, but uh, mostly we doesn't want to uh, allow that. So that's why a6 chase away the knight from b5. Knight a3, why he goes to a3? Because he would like to go c4 then. And uh, from there, also after the exchanges, he would like to go to b6. Why? He would like to remove the c8 bishop. Why he would like to exchange the c8 bishop? c8 bishop is also helping on the attack. For example, if we can reach g4, g3, and uh, maybe black closes with h3, many times we are threatening with bishop takes uh, h3. Let me show you uh, an interesting stuff for that. Hmm. So why I said the, the, we start with the easiest, easier game, because let me show one of the game when white doesn't hurry with this plan, which I showed previously, and those will be the main games. If white doesn't hurry with that, if he wastes some time, like 93, 93 actually a higher level is not a really useful move. Maybe I can say it's a useless because for c5, he doesn't need to come with the knight. The bishop is also he helping from, from f2, and the knight on e1 is completely okay. Then we can come with g5 and b4. What can we say about b4? Also not a really useful move. Yes, because b4 is helping c5, but actually this is a race. And in the, in the race, uh, we cannot waste time. For example, with knight d3 and b4, we cannot waste time because we will be much slower than the opponent. And this is a very uh, important critical point because uh, here we can already play knight f6. In previously, if he played with the correct way, which I showed previously on there, it was uh, not really good because I mentioned the d6, c7 pawns protections are very important. But here we are so quick in the attack. We, we can just play this move and our attack will be even faster. Rook c1, knight g6, c5. Finally, he played c5, but with slow, slow. Uh, by the way, it's also one of my game against an uh, international master from uh, Ireland. And Grimson, g4, and uh, king h1. That's why king h1, because uh, he can go back with his bishop uh, to g1 and protect his king as much as possible. g3. g3 is a very strong move, typical pawn sacrifice. Why? Uh, if h takes g3, then f takes g3, bishop takes, and pawn h4 tempo, the bishop has to leave h2 or f2 and knight h5, and followed by queen g5, knight g3 check. This is a decisive attack with black. So it's, it's, it's completely winning. White doesn't like to go in that. So that's why after g3, they play bishop g1. His idea is that if g takes h2, then bishop f2 come back. Also, he doesn't stop completely the attack, but the point is that he stops knight h, he stops knight h4 just a little bit. So that's why the bishop on f2 still the, the best square, we can say that. But okay, I didn't hurry with that. I continue with the basic plan, rook f7 and queen b3. Also pretty slow, but why I mentioned previously the... If you remember in the previous game, I mentioned that uh, White's idea is c takes d6, c takes d6, knight c4, knight b6, and, and uh, take the light squared bishop. Why? Because in this position, if it wouldn't be light squared bishop, White can play simply h3, and he closes the king side completely. Black doesn't really have attack, and he can just focus on, focus on his uh, queen side attack. But what happening after h3? 
Thanks for the C8, Bishop. This is losing for him because Bishop takes H3. Nice sacrifice, G takes H3. Queen D7 or C8 doesn't matter. Threatening to give checkmate on H3. King G2. And he think that, okay, King G2, I just protected everything. But now this G6 knight can jump to H4 and unpleasant check and checkmate in a few moves. So that's why the H3 is not really possible here. Queen B3 happened. And okay, now to continue the attack with a straightforward H4 wouldn't be so good. Probably right now it's also working, but we uh, we uh, doesn't allow our knight here. So this square is not, not free already. So he has this option like h3, bishop takes h3 and uh, king g2 and no knight h4 check. That's why I said uh, maybe it's also possible because maybe we, white's position is so slow right now. We can play even knight h7, knight g5 plan. But okay, maybe he plays knight f2. Not completely winning if he take it, then takes back and uh, rook h1, and mm, he can he can keep he can keep himself. Okay, so h4 is very rare when we play for uh, h4 in this position. G takes h2, bishop f2. So my opponent knew the the basic uh, defending plan, but this also doesn't solve his problems because now h4. Rook fd1. For rook fd1, I also can, can say that it's so useful because the d5 is completely closed. But now uh, his idea is bishop f1. That's why he played that. Of course, if he would have time, it would be better to double on the c file, like rook c2, rook fc1. But uh, now it's no time for that. So I completely understand his move. But OK, black can continue his idea with knight h5. Bishop f1 and h3. Knight g3 check was also possible, but the point is that doesn't count the material, just focus on the attack against the against the white, white king and king position completely. G takes h3, knight g3 check, takes. That's why he need to take because uh, after king h2, queen h4, followed by uh, knight takes f followed by knight takes f1 check and queen takes h3 and uh, he's completely hopeless. But this was only one, one stuff because knight takes f1 and then queen d7 would be also winning immediately. So bishop g3, f takes g3. Now these pawns are pretty strong. So uh, his position is uh, hopeless enough. Rook c2. Rook takes f3, the rest is already not uh, difficult. And after queen f6, my opponent resigned because bishop takes f3, queen f3, then, then um, completely losing. Moreover, knight h5, knight h4 will also come and his position is hopeless. Okay, so uh, if white doesn't do any special, like very, very slow, like if you see in here, he should be already knight b5, knight c7, very quickly he should already come. Uh, without that, he's very slow and, and uh, very, very easily he can lose the game. And now let's go back after this game. Let's go back to the previous one uh, where my opponent was the, the American international master, Eric Kislik. Then... Uh, he already knew these ideas and tried to come with a faster plan. So knight a3, this was the position which we were talking about before. Rook f7, black uh, continue with the same plan. Knight c4 and rook g7. So the rook is perfect on g7, help on the attack on the g file and make protection on uh, c7 also. But what happening now if he would play c takes d6? Yeah, because if c takes d6, then knight b6 and, uh, and take this bishop. And as I mentioned before, white's uh, defending will be much easier. Now we take back with the knight. So this is another advantage of the knight on e8. We can go with that also. 
and uh, and the knight cannot take the c8 bishop and black's uh, attack doesn't stop at all okay so he played knight d3 very very logical idea what is his plan his plan is c takes d6 we already talk about if c takes d6 then knight b6 but if the knight takes back first of all the e5 is hanging but maybe if he, black would protect that then he can even play for knight c5 and go to e6 and even with the pawn sacrifice to uh, exchange the c8 bishop that's also a good idea for him because the queen side and the center is opened he have a strong pressure for the sacrificed pawn so black should be fast of course i realized that during the game and i uh, and i try to play uh, much uh, much more faster also so i play g4 g4 is a position of pawn sacrifice for the attack of course, he should, he should capture that, otherwise uh, the vice g3 coming like in the previous game. And my idea was queen g5. So uh, positional pawn sacrifice for the attack. This is also very typical here. If you really focus on the attack, you doesn't have to uh, think about the material. G, of course, after g takes h5, this involves a strong, uh, strong attack for black with knight h4 and and suddenly we are very very strong on the g file so it's it's i can say this is a decisive attack here so g3 happened g3 is a typical move when uh, he would like to stop a little bit the the attack this h takes g for g3 attack but also doesn't uh, completely stop it h takes g4 now i would i was happy already to reach without any sacrifice this uh, g4 c takes d6 knight takes d6 also take back with the knight knight c5 and uh, okay here we have already several nice uh, continuation i played uh, queen h5 what is the idea behind queen h5 play for f3 and then uh, queen h3 and now this is not easy to to avoid he played knight takes d6 but his position is already losing here so very quickly he can uh, lose the game c takes d6 knight e6 here i didn't mind at all i have to give up my bishop because now this uh, h3 like in the previous game he, he cannot uh, so it's, it's different structure white black black won't play this h3 because he can't this g3 h3 closing and that's why as we reach the g4 uh, and no need to play g3 we don't need the light squared bishop already at all so uh, we have f3 and okay, now we can see that uh, black uh, won a piece because the bishop cannot move as uh, queen h3 and, and uh, checkmate on g2. So he played bishop b6, f takes e2, queen takes e2. Okay, black's position is completely winning here. But in a practical game, we always have to be careful. Moreover, that, that case, when the... the, the structure is a little bit changed until this black had always the initiative but now it can be changed he has material advantage and white has initiative for that maybe not enough but something pressure and i decide that okay i sacrifice back the piece but uh, but continue the attack and the initiative and that's why i played knight f4 and uh, yeah objectively this was also okay of course during the game you you are not completely sure on that like now even i check with the computer and of course after the game it's uh, it's already everything is clear but if you are in a game you always have to think uh, in uh, logical human things like uh, okay sacrifice back but i have i have uh, pressure and attack after that also 
So takes, he takes, of course, this was the idea behind that. Rook a d1 actually doesn't matter because f3 and g3, and it's completely crushing the white's position. H takes g3, <coughs> bishop f4, and his position is hopeless. Rook d5, last trick. If I would take with the rook check, queen takes back. Yeah, it was the last trick. And I also lose my queen and lose the rook in the end. But of course, uh, the simple queen h3 was winning the game very easily. And after this, he resigned the game because on g3, he cannot protect. Okay, so this was already uh, another important game when white was already not, uh, wasn't so slow like in the previous game. He also tried to come in the other side, but black was faster because uh, his, his attack was more powerful. Let me show you the next game, which, uh, which is very similar like this uh, after, uh, until some time. The next game is uh, uh, Topalov. White was Topalov against uh, Rapport, Rapport, Richard Rapport. So we already heard about him a few times. Uh, let me go to the similar position because this game was the same for a long time, like my previous game. E6, knight e3, rook f7, knight c4, rook g7. So until the move 18, it was completely same. Uh, by the way, that game was before, so my opponent tried to improve that with this knight d3 move, which he played. Topalov played c takes d6. Logical move, first he played that. And uh, as I mentioned before, I think now everybody knows with which should we take back with the knight, of course, rook a3. What is the idea behind rook a3? A very logical idea. On the third rank, the rook is pretty useful. Yeah, so if, if uh, black will break with g4 somehow, then something f takes g4, and uh, yeah, the rook will be any time. Um, yeah, nice, nice, useful from the third rank. We can just say that. On the other hand, uh, that is a very important uh, factor here. Uh, white should try to stop the g4 as much as possible. At this moment, seems to be his stopping until this time, but uh, with an easy motive, uh, black can reach that without any difficulty. So he doesn't need to play with this knight even, because he can play now knight takes c4. The bishop has to leave the diagonal and g4, and very easily he could uh, reach it. And uh, yeah, Topolov played the same idea, f takes h takes g3. So if you notice know motif, it's a typical, typical uh, reaction with the white in the king's Indian. Probably from this game, my, my previous opponent uh, learned this motif or, or see from there, and that's why he also, also tried that. But this move also uh, doesn't stop completely the attack. Black also played, uh, again, a very logical continuation. King h7, what is the idea of that? Of course, he would like to avoid this d6 discover check. d6 discover check uh, would be not, would, wouldn't be a problem. Wouldn't be a problem still now because king h7 and... Uh, and he's in pin on the D file. So it doesn't make any big problem for, uh, for black here. King H7, now he went out of that, and knight D3. Okay, he would like to continue with his basic idea, knight C5, followed by knight D6. But here we can also say that, like in my game, we played G4, and that's why uh, the c8 bishop is already not so important, so we don't really mind if he uh, exchanged that. We can just focus on the attack. We have new options. We don't have g3 now, but we have other new options for the attack, maybe on the h file, sometimes the f3 motif. Of course, we don't really want to hurry with the f3 because it could be, it would be close the position very quickly. 
And probably this is not a really good idea to hurry with that because uh, we could uh, keep the tension instead of that. Queen g5, why not? The queen is also coming to the attack. Knight c5 and queen h5, completely similar motif like in the previous game. Queen c2, okay, now he doesn't want to play knight e6 because no any uh, special point of that. And uh, bishop g5, great move. Why he played bishop g5? First of all, he a little bit uh, opened the h file and uh, also activated the bishop a, a bit. But if we want to say the concrete uh, idea behind that is that after queen c2, White's idea was rook d1 and d6 to open the position as much as possible and uh, create some counterplay with that. And let's see what is the point of bishop g5. Rook d1 and bishop e7. So we stop his another counterplay also completely. Moreover, take some pressure on the c5 knight too. So he, he protected with uh, b4. And another very nice, calm, cool-blooded move happened. Bishop d6 completely stopped d6. Why doesn't have any special counterplay on the <clears throat> queen side? And black can come without any problem on the, on the king's side attack. Bishop f1. Let's see how we should continue the play here. With our pieces, we attack very well, but black's uh, white protection is also good enough. So let's see what should we uh, do for it. Probably we need this rook yet. Maybe on the f or the h file. So bishop d7. The bishop is no problem again. And of course, we can also ignore the b7 pawn. It's no problem at all. Come to attack with the rook is even much more important. Knight takes b7. Bishop takes b4. And rook a2. Okay. Black also take back the pawn. The rook has to leave the third rank. Why rook b3 was not working by tempo? Because bishop a4. And we completely uh, skewer him. Okay, and after rook a2, rapport uh, saw that it's time to do something nice, nice action. Knight h4, double exclamation mark. He felt that it's time to attack. Knight wants to go to f3. And uh, if he takes, of course, then uh, after g3, we will have a strong attack. g takes g3. H takes G3, F takes G3. Now the G pawn is a little bit uh, closes the G file. So he played Bishop E3. And, uh, and let's see how can black continue. Rook F8, another excellent move. What could be the plan with that? He played Queen B3, but it also doesn't uh, avoid the main idea. Rook F2, double exclamation mark. What is the point behind rook f2? First of all, another piece come to the attack. And if he captures it, then the g file is open. So it will be a mating attack. Rook takes f2 happened in the game. Uh, in case of bishop takes f2, it would be also quick checkmate. g takes, king takes, queen takes h4. For example, the king goes to e2. And now the attack is coming from the other side, bishop b5. So that's why we have to see the all, all part of the board. Because uh, if we just focus on the, on the king side, just that part where we attack, sometimes we cannot see the, the other threats. And uh, OK, and it's checkmate because rook d3, queen e1 check, king f3 and rook g3 checkmate, so it's very quickly he would be in trouble. So he took with the rook, g takes f2, king takes f2, queen takes h4, king e2, 
bishop b5 check also from this side and he played rook d3 and that time he resigned the game because it's checkmating two after queen e1 and uh, rook g3 like in before so i did, i think it was uh, also a really beautiful game uh with the with the same idea also like the previous uh and let me show you the next one so if you learn this type of motifs it will be it will be really useful yeah nakamura was uh, still a very nice uh king's indian player so i would like to show one of his uh, most beautiful victory and this was the, this was the bayonet variation now we see a gelfand nakamura game gelfand is also uh, world class player he started with 92 98 b4 so the white has two strategies with the knight the previous which we saw the, was the 91 and 93 or even um, look this ways and another is 92 when uh, he would like to play b4 c5 and then put the knight to c4 this is another strategy uh, black plays the same plan completely f5 c5 knight f6 f3 f4 only when f3 then we play the f4 to avoid every bishop g4 stuff on the light squares knight c4 g5 a4 his idea is bishop a3 and take some pressure on the g6 so here we we cannot hurry with the h5 like in the previous variation here we need to play uh, knight g6 and play quickly the rook f7 bishop f8 to make uh, a promotion of the d6 pawn bishop a3 rook f7 b5 d takes c5 yeah still d takes c5 is the best which uh, closes the position because uh, if bishop f8 then after b6 he would like to crush as much as possible the position and uh, if black uh, too greedy and just focus on his uh, queen side then it's very quickly white will have an, an attack and it's very important who is faster now white is faster so d takes c5 is still a better idea bishop takes c5 and now h5 a5 as i mentioned this is a race so both sides are following their uh, own idea g4 and b6 this is the point uh, by the way d6 is not a uh, not a problem at all first of all we have bishop e6 all the time and uh, d takes c7 queen c7 and uh, and we win a piece on the on the c file we can take even with the rook also so this is not the point moreover many times we have uh, bishop f8 also even and uh, and pin him completely so this strategy is not not good for him he cannot open the position properly so that's why b6 and this knight b5 is his uh, main strategy white also continue his plan g3 king h1 yeah as i mentioned before it would be the same after h3 i think now everybody knows what would be the move bishop takes h3 of course takes queen d7 and knight h4 the same winning idea so king h1 and uh, bishop f8 bishop f8 is a very very nice and tricky move the basic idea is that uh within a tempo and uh when he, we force him to g1 with the bishop then we can we can continue the attack but uh, there is a trick also behind that for example if he would take take on f8 i usually ask in this position when if it, when uh, if it is a quiz okay and with which piece do we take back the bishop and of course the correct answer for that is uh, with either because uh, neither because uh knight x e4 is a brilliant uh nice sacrifice prepares for queen h4 and he cannot avoid the checkmate that side 
Yeah, for example, knight, because now the bishop cannot come back to defense. Yeah, so for example, if we would come to another square, that's wrong because bishop c5, queen h4, bishop g1, and um, white is safe. G takes h2, bishop f2, and he's completely safe and he's a piece up. So he, he can win the game without any problem. But after knight takes e4, we will even control, even control the c5 square. So bishop c5, knight takes c5. So it's simply not working. So after this, he can resign the game because knight takes e4, queen h4, and he's completely, completely hopeless here. OK, but what about d6? Geffen is also an excellent player. So he wanted to open up the position even with pawn sacrifice. Also, a takes b6 and bishop g1. Doesn't care about the material, just focus on the, on the initiative on the queen side. Uh, by the way, after a takes b6, we could take on a1 and then c takes d6 and, and win this pawn also. So it's not, uh, not really working. Bishop g1. And uh, yeah, after bishop g1, we also have a great continuation. Uh, actually, this move, that's why we didn't see in the knight e1 system, because then the g2 pawn is protected. And here is not. So here, knight h4 is a great continuation, because uh, we can find a new weakness here. And uh, we have a pretty strong threat with bishop h3 right now and he will get uh, something smothered checkmate. And g takes h3, g2. So he really has to be careful about it. Rook e1, why he played rook e1? He wanted to freeze the f1 square for the bishop. So for example, after bishop h3, simply bishop f1, and he protects that and he's fine. The bishop is hanging, so it wouldn't be a good idea for, uh, for black. But now, OK, Nakamura also found a brilliant continuation. But we can feel that we have a strong attack. Knight takes g2. If we feel that we have a strong attack, we have many pieces attacking against the king, usually it's time to sacrifice, some to, some time to crush the opponent's position. And now it, it happened the same. Okay, now we play the losing move with the d takes c7. Very logical because white really wants to come something on the other side and uh, try to find counterplay as quick as possible. Okay, king takes g2 would be also very dangerous because rook g7, dc7, g takes h2. So here he has also problem like king h2, knight g4 check in h4 and and we have also decisive attack here this position is is uh, completely wrong so okay yeah, king h1 g h g1 it is not losing immediately but black has also very strong attack here but okay let's go back to the game d takes c7 and now another brilliant continuation happened i don't say this is so difficult but uh, in a get it in a practical game, it's uh, it's it's awesome. With knight takes e1, excellent. And the point is very beautiful. If uh, c takes d8, white has two po two queens up. He has two queens, but unfortunately the checkmate is more important with uh, g2 exactly. So queen takes e1. And how can we continue the attack? Now material is also better already, but still Nakamura focused on the attack very well. G2 check, king takes G2, rook G7 check, even sacrifice a pawn for the attack, focus on the attack. King H1, bishop H3, exclamation mark, bishop F1, and Queen d3, double exclamation mark. This was one of the most beautiful moves in the game. Uh, usually I give it in the quiz also, what is the winning move here? So this is an excellent one. 
of course, the queen is taboo as uh, bishop g2 checkmate, and we create another threat on the on the f3 pawn. Knight takes e5 happened. Yeah, it's a really brilliant move. Bishop takes f1. The queen is very powerful there, so he has lots of threats, like queen takes c3, so this knight is also hanging simply. Rook c1, queen takes e5, c8, queen. So in the end, uh, black is a pawn up, so white resigned the game here. So also we could see a very, very strong attack and uh, and he completely crushed his position. Though this game was a pretty brilliant. So uh, yeah, Nakamura was a, was a great, uh, and even now also a great player how he, he attack uh, here. And let me show one of, uh, one of his another game. Uh, in the King's Indian, how he he attacked here. Also, this position, this variation will be like the previous, the knight e1, and then the bishop e3, and the knight d3. Now it's a little bit different. The knight is on d7. Okay, I can show from here also. Knight e8 and knight uh, d7 is the another system uh, with the same idea. So the strategy will be very, very similar. 9g6, h5, uh, I mean uh, c5, h5 will be black's plan, knight f6. Thanks for that. Uh, the knight played also to d3. Black can also play with the knight to, to uh, f6. The knight d3 strategy compared to the knight d8 is that, okay, he doesn't uh, control from here the d6, c7 squares, but he controls the c5 a little bit. Rook, F1, rook c1, rook f7, king h1. Okay, why he played this? Because c takes, c takes, knight b5, and now we control the c7 square very well. So king h1, h5, c takes d6, c takes d6, knight b5. Both players are throwing their plans. White uh, plays on the queen side to create some weaknesses. And black uh, attacks his opponent king on the on the other side as fast as possible. A6, knight a3, b5. B5 is an important move because we have to prevent the knight c4, knight b6 idea. Rook c6. Okay, c6 is a nice square of the rook, but uh, Black can ignore this, so it's no, no problem. G4, <clears throat> queen c2, queen f8, rook c1, bishop d7, rook c7. Yeah, it's not so important because uh, probably we wouldn't take the, the rook on c6 because he can take back with the pawn. So he just uh, went out of the taking with this bishop uh, d7 move. Bishop h6, he also just uh, focus on the attack. Bishop e1, go out of the of the g3 from the potential uh, tempo. And h4, now this is working. Now uh, g3 wouldn't be good because after h3, bishop takes h3 is not working because there is no any queen attack from c8. And, uh, and he could close the position. Moreover, bishop f1 protection, and, and he's safe. So now h, h4, he would like to play h3 and, uh, and open up the position as much as possible here. OK, f takes uh, g4 and f3. This was his idea. But of course, not because of the c1 rook. This bishop is more useful than the c1 rook. Also, nice combination coming. Knight takes e4, excellent move. If f takes e4, his idea is this rook, e, rook f1, excellent check. King g2, bishop e3, brilliant silent move. <clears throat> Dr. h3, he is, uh, he is simply losing it, checkmate in a few moves. 
We played rugby one and rugby F3. Mm, Hikaru continues the strong attack quite is already hopeless here. Rook d7, of course, this, this would be also completely losing for white. Rook d7, and nice, rook f1 check, king g2, bishop e3, another fantastic move. Okay, it was not the only one, but it's a, it's a nice possibility again. Bishop g3 takes... I just saw the show the rest because it's it's really beautiful how he played. Also, silent move. White is a rook up, but he cannot uh, protect the position. Knight takes king g4, knight hf3. Also, a nice move. Freeze the h4 square of the queen. And it's a very nice finish with, with the brilliant checkmate. So it's another brilliant uh, victory by, by Nakamura. And against also against uh, a very top, top player, Wesley So. Yeah, almost 2,800 players. So it's an excellent game. And uh, I see we don't have uh, so many times. So in the rest, I would like to show still one of my game when I, I uh, win also against a really good opponent the Austrian top player Marcus Rager in the same variation. Similar strategy, I also played the 97, so I also like to, to uh, mix it. <clears throat> 93, f5, f3, f4, bishop d2. So we can do the same plan, g5, Rook c1, knight f6. White is also a great player, so he comes so quickly. And just in time, black can always stop the, the attack. Bishop a5, b6. Uh, he would like to provoke weaknesses on the position. C takes d6. C takes this. B takes a5 is not good. This is also a possibility, but d c7, c6. He's very strong here, so I don't want to analyze now these lines, but uh, it, it, this is just enough. It's, it's, uh, it's not good for uh, black. So take back is important. Bishop e1, also the same idea, a6, knight c3, a5. a5 is also a typical move to prevent knight b4, knight c6. So this was still also preparation for me. Uh, from my side, knight f2, bishop f8, also typical, knight b5 and h5. And knight, knight h3 was the novelty by my opponent. It's a really smart move. Rare, but smart. What is the idea of that? If uh, we would play the tempting bishop takes h3, then after g takes h3, he stopped the g4 attack well enough, and it doesn't matter the g files opened a bit, because uh, we can play queen, king h1 anytime. So he, he doesn't have any problem here at all. And if I would play the most tempting g4, then knight g5, rook g7, knight e6, and he already uh, exchanged the previous mentioned uh, important c8 bishop. Yes, and white's uh, position is really good. Black cannot continue the attack properly. G3, H3, always. So knight T8 I had to play, but okay, it's also a typical move, no problem. King H1, rook G7, both sides are continue their plan. Rook C3, he's just uh, prevent the G4 well enough. I played bishop D7, developing move, take pressure on the B5 knight. And right now I am threatening with G4. Because f takes, h takes, bishop takes, bishop takes b5, this knight would be hanging. Of course, he realized that very quickly and played a4. It's a nice, useful move. And that's why I wanted to show this game. How can I play for g4 more? Knight f6 is no possible because knight c7 and knight e6, the previously mentioned motif. Knight h8. It's a very, very nice, important also typical move. We open the G file for the rook. And uh, 
After knight f2, he stopped again. Knight f7, and the knight is going this way to h6 from there. He also helps in the g4 uh, breaks road. h3, knight h6. And after some time, he cannot uh, avoid that. First of all, I played rook c8 to neutralize the c file a little bit to avoid the knight c7 stuffs. So, yeah, knight e7, he would like to provoke the exchange, but it was no problem for me. g4 takes, takes, takes knight f6. And just a decisive attack with, uh, with black. Even if he exchange everything here, also doesn't help for him. Queen g5. Now on the g5 square, g5 uh, square is a nice square of the queen. And on the g file, we have a great queen and rook battery with a decisive attack. So he played g3. Also queen h5, continue the pressure there. Queen d2, rook h7. So he, he simply cannot avoid the the attack at all. And after queen h1, he resigned because then rook h2, queen g2, bishop h6 check will come if the king goes to f3. Yeah, so I would like to show these, uh, these nice games, uh, mostly focus on, uh, on the black side, uh, how to, of course, with white, uh, uh, with white, we can also see a lot of nice games. But first, we, we, we focus on that, how to, how to attack with black side. And, uh, and it can be a great repertoire against the d4. So uh, yeah, we, we are in the last few minutes. So uh, Ben, I'm ready to, to see the, to hear the questions. Thank you so much for the attention here. Okay, so starting off with the first question. Uh, what if what is your favorite chess opening of all time with white, and how can we learn it? Or yeah, how can we learn it? <laughs> yes, yes. You know, it's it's actually a, ve a very good question because if I want to uh, answer for this uh, very professionally, we have to like all of the openings. But I am as an attacking player, I like to attack. You could see from these games so so. Uh, with with one one uh, white uh, color, I can mention that uh, I really enjoyed that uh, English attack. If you see my uh, my previous uh, online class uh, two weeks ago, it uh, you you could see uh, how many games I I uh, showed there. Maybe I can say that 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 was one of my favorite uh, to attack. It not means that uh, we always win. So I also lost games with that also. So it's not not means that uh, we are always winning with that. But uh, usually we like that, which is very near to our style. So we divide this uh, English attack against the Nador for this Scheveningen systems. I I uh, like that always. And with black, this King's Indian attacking game was always uh, one of my favorite. Okay, second question. Uh, how important is pawn structures uh, during a game? Uh, pawn structure uh, during the game is one of the most important. Uh, as you could see in this King's Indian, the center is closed enough and usually we can say that the pawn structure showing uh, where should we play. So if you remember, white pawn structure is g2, f3, e4, d5 in this system. Um, I can say that uh, that is like an arrow, that pawn structure. And the arrow shows that where should he attack. So he should play, he should attack on the queen side because the arrow is showing that. But what about with black? c7, d6, e5, f4, sometimes even g3 if we reach that. It's showing that black should play on the, on the king side. But um, another very important uh, stuff here, why black, had, why black has time for this knight e8, f5, f4 attack? In a normal open Sicilian or open position, it's no time for that with the knight is going back to the back rank. Why possible here? Very important factor 
because the center is closed. And if the center is closed, uh, we have time for that because the opponent cannot attack so quickly. So bone structure is very important. So next question, uh, any advice that how can I improve rook end games? Uh, I keep losing uh, these kind of end games in the tournament. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, also a very good question. Uh, rook end games, it's very important to studying because usually uh, that is the most, uh, most common, the most, uh, most common which is coming out. Uh, first of all, I can recommend the theoretical uh, rook end games to study as much as possible. There are many books from that. Okay, of, of course, the best if you do this with your coach because uh, he can teach you mostly that. But there are books also for that. I can recommend the Dvoretsky book for that. That's really good. And uh, very important to see if you know the most, most important, uh, most important uh, uh, theoretical uh, end games, you, you, you should see practical end games for that. Because, because if there are more pieces, which usually we reach, the practical parts is also uh, also very important that. Mm. Yeah, so uh, I play English opening. Uh, any good books you suggest? Mm -hmm. English opening, yes, there's the first C4, uh-huh. Uh, I think there are many books from that, which I remember just right now, that is uh, the Marin book, Marin Grandmaster Repertoire, I, re I remember something like that, he, he do a repertoire for the English opening for that, but uh, I can also recommend that, uh, do, the, do this with your coach, that is the best, and go one by one in your lines, because the Chess, chess books can be also really good, but uh, it's very important to analyze them. And, and if, you can, if you can analyze with somebody, uh, that's, that, that's the best, that's the most useful. Hmm. Yeah, so fifth question. How can I go deep on endgame preparations? I am a 1200 rated player and 15 years of age. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, I can do the same same answer like the two questions before. Uh, like uh, first of all, try to study the the theoretical end games. Dvoretsky book is good for that end game manual. Uh, so so that that uh, see very deeply and also uh, also then then practical examples. But first you should you should learn the the theoretical stuffs and. I can also say that with a coach, that would be the best always. Okay, so yeah, the last question. Which game is the best end game ever played, according to you? Which is the best opening? End game. Yeah. Uh, best end game ever played. My, yes. In your opinion. Uh, in your opinion. So, yes. Ever, Best? like in, in any game. Oh, uh -huh. so just I should say something good end game. Oh, it's a very good question because there are many, many good end games. I think the best if you see this from, uh, from books also and, and you, can find, uh, you can find many. Of course, uh, in, in my memory, there are also many, many, but I think it doesn't matter if I say, uh, say something for that. If, if I if I say something game so so you can find many many in the previous mentioned book also yes yeah, so that was all of the questions and thank you very much for this uh, camp I think everybody learned a lot from it yeah thank you so much also for for attention and uh, if you if you see the video. And also, thank you so much for uh, for Nurter to organize these great stuff always. And see you in next time. Thank you, everyone. See you. Bye. Thank you.